So as you can see, we've got lots of lures and things hanging up here. This is, um, well, there's things like here. There's perks. This is for wreck fishing. It's a big, heavy iron, iron lead bar with a pattern on it. You can actually have these with just the lead. I've got some down here. There's one there. It's just a big lead perk. And it's for wrecking. You just put a big hook on the top, uh, bottom, tie it to your line, just drop it straight down. And jig it up and down and you'll catch great big cod on it. Now, when I went wrecking a long, long time ago, the uh, skipper of that, because it was a charter boat I went on, he said that at that time there was all these different pattern ones, but he reckoned the lead bars worked the best out of all of them. Out of all the pattern ones, he reckoned the lead bars, just plain lead bars, were the best ones. So there you go. So that's why I've got some lead bar ones. Although I haven't been wrecking for a very long time because, uh, excuse the plane going over. Yeah, the I just haven't been um, out far enough anywhere. My boat's not really, there's no wrecks close enough where I am. I mean, there is one further out, but it doesn't produce that well. The trouble is, there's another one there, look, it's a, like a chrome one. And some of the wrecks, most of the wrecks these days are outfished, or simply the wrecks are just crumbled down to nothing, a lot of them. So there's not much to fish on. But we'll, we'll see, maybe we'll get a chance to go on one one day again. But, um, trouble is all this, all this GPS new technology, there's not many wrecks happening. You know, years ago they were happening every, well, every month, every, every few years you get a wreck, not anymore. That is just one of these bars, but this is, um, I bought these up in Sweden, they were for sea trout. Apparently sea trout and salmon love the bright orange pink colours, so... There you go. And there's another one there. This one here actually, not that one, this one here. I found this somewhere. Can't remember where. But it's quite an old one, I think. It's a... It's called a flasher. Just seeing if it had a name. But... Doesn't appear to. So yeah, that's another one. But like I say, one day if we ever get to a wreck, we might go out and use those, we'll see. This is uh, another lure. I, I just bought this for the hell of it because it's really, really cheap. It was being sold off on sale. It's got like electronics in it that's supposed to give the signal of a struggling fish in the water. It's, uh, it, it's very gimmicky, put it that way. And it, it's been tested and certified by Captain Wild Bill. And I don't know Captain Wild Bill, but I'm sure he was one of the deadliest catch. He was a crab fisherman. So it might be good for catching crab, eh? <laughs> don't know I bought it I just thought I thought I'd try it and just for a bit of fun but I've never actually got around to using it I mean this thing's going to go deep but well, we might take it out one day but don't hold your hopes on catching anything with it although I, you never know I might be surprised again another wreck thing what the hell this was used for I don't know what this came off of but look at the size of that treble that's like a flipping gaff I suppose that would go down to a wreck somehow somewhere but it's just a muppet what they call a muppet here um on the biggest treble you've ever seen. You could, like I say, just gaff your fish with that. That is bait elastic for putting on around like peeler crab, that sort of thing. Or some people use it when they've got like bait they want to keep on the, on the hook, especially if the bait's a bit soft and that. I'll just move you in closer actually with this. So these are Chinese lures. I tried them ages ago and um, they were pretty rubbish. I did actually eventually catch a bass on it, but I was determined to catch one, and I finally did, and that one bass pretty much paid for those lures. Like, so, that, and I bought about eight of these lures, so, just wanted to see, you know, because they, but they're the multi-jointed ones, and like I say, you know, I might find a use for them one day, they might be somewhere out there. Again, more lure, I mean, there's lures everywhere around here, and again, there's, that is actually a new Conrad lure, which I've never actually taken out of the packet. And then behind it, if you can see that, there's another wrecking perk. There's uh, several of those kicking around. Like I say, I've never got to use them. There's a Lowrance cable, that's for a fish finder or GPS. And then here you've just got little bits which are hung up. I mean, I used to make ready-made traces and things in there. I've got like smaller hooks, snap links. This is all the little spinners. I used to use these in Sweden quite a lot for perch. And they're, they're actually fun just going down the beach and fishing with these a little bit. I went down, used to catch mackerel, pollock, just, just when I'm doing, like, having a bit of fun, more so than actually fishing seriously of any description. Same as there. 
some in packets. And I did fish with these and catch a lovely big Cooch's bream at one point. Float stops, snap swivels. These are interesting. This is, you wouldn't expect a saltwater fisherman to have these. <laughs> but these are, oh, they are, size 10 specimen barbless. There you go, got some tiny hooks. And you think those tiny, check these ones. I don't know if you can actually see that in the packet there. Might show up. These are size 18. And they've even got wide gape on them. I mean, seriously, wide gape on a size 18. It's not much very wide, is it? Yeah, that's just from fishing uh, up in Sweden again on doing different kinds of fishing, freshwater fishing. These are hooks with swivels, because I used to put swivels on the hooks. On the top there for free lining, I close down the snap swivel onto the hook so it doesn't undo. Um, basically, I just tie that straight on. And that swivel on the top of the hook takes out like um, wind knots or twists in the line, gets rid of it, and it works very effective. And no, the swivel does not affect the fishing whatsoever. And again, these are just tiny, tiny little hooks, a sort of mullet, that sort of thing. And that's kind of your line up there, really. Um, I suppose we can go up here. This is, we've done all this, I think, before, but this is just boxes of hooks. You've got 10 O's, 8 O's, 4 O's, trebles. These are all different trebles that I use for the lures. 1 O's, these are for the bream fishing, and these are pots of swi one swivels. One's a lot of the smaller hooks, again, for sure, fishing for sort of the breams and stuff. These are all more big hooks up here. 8 O's, 9 O's, 10 O's, that sort of thing, or 7 O's. And these are all the reels that I've just stacked up out of the way. And that's all line. Right at the top, that's all bulk boxes of line. You've got 30 pounds, 28, 23. Uh, it says 20. Yeah, there's two boxes of 23 because I use that one quite a lot off the boat, the 23. And you've got 17, 18, 15, 17, 19, and 45. But I think there's only a couple of spools of 45. That's just for conga, conga kind of fishing or if I do anything big like that. And then down here, you may think, well, that's just a bench. It's not, actually. This this here is... If I can get the peanut butter, these things are good for collecting bait in. If I can get that out of the way. This is a little storage area that I put up. Which is... It holds, usually, all the fishing weights and that. So you've got, usually, bullet weight leads, which I use for bassing off the shore, and little ones like that. I don't use very heavy leads when I'm bass fishing. And then you've got... Normally three ounces or four ounces, fives, sixes, and then sort of, up, well, they're really big leads. There's not many of them for anything I do in very big tides. These are hand warmers for winter fishing. I've got lots of them, but they probably don't work anymore because they've been in there a couple of years. You go along, you've got grip leads, Gemini leads. Um, that's probably just varnish, yeah, varnish for sort of eyes and that. You've got all the different booms over there, zip sliders. And just a general mix. Grip leads I don't tend to use much. We don't really, I mean, we have strong tides, but we have a lot of rough ground, so. They do get used now and again, but not often. In fact, what we're going to do is I'm going to open one of these heater things up and see if it still works. So yeah, there you go, that's just a shelf of whatever. And that thing there, that's a poncho. That's just some place to carry around in Sweden through the forest and that. In case we have like um, a lot of rain, which happened sometimes when I was hiking through forests and stuff. So we just stay dry. Right. Find out if these hand warmers work, well, one of them at least. They're probably way, way out of date. Way, way out of date. Yeah, they're about three years out of date, so I don't think they're going to work. Look these things here, these are little key rings, they're little seawater key rings like octopuses. Um, oh, you, let's have a look. We got stingrays. Stingrays? That's a stingray, I think. We got starfish, turtles. There's the octopus. And there's some mammals, walruses, crabs, all these sort of little things. There was lobsters, sharks, all sorts in there. They're just key rings. They, um, when people used to come up and grab lobsters, and they'd come up with children, sometimes they'd give the key, you know, a key ring to the 
to the child because the, they brought the children up to see the lobsters and that, so gave me a little free key ring, ones that would buy lobsters. Actually, this does actually work a little bit. Now, I'm actually quite warm at the moment, so obviously I'm not going to feel it, but if, if you're on a really cold night, you'd feel that heat. It's not much, but you would feel it. So, there you go. I'll leave them a bit longer. They might warm up even more. This looks a bit rusty. Oh, it's just a few. They won't be any good. The hooks, hooks have gone rusty. They're su you see there, they're such small hooks, shrimp rig, that they'll be no good. So this is the diving equipment in here. This is um, Apex regulator. You see there you've got the two. One is for a spare or for a friend if they get in trouble kind of thing for buddy diving. And then you've got depth gauge, compass when you're underwater and how much air is left in your tank. Then you've got the dive jacket. I think this is an eight is buddy dive buddy. I can't remember, it's a long, I've used it for a while, I say I haven't used it, there's a video where we go down and do the mooring. This here, this is a, a line, uh, a line, it's a net cutter, there's a blade in there, you'll see in there, and basically if you end up swimming into a gill net or something, you, you're, in, you, well, you're in for a nightmare. So this is so you can cut yourself out the net, because over here you're drifting so fast with the tide, um, it could happen quite easily that you have suddenly grit, dragged into a great big net or something so that's to cut yourself out if in the case of emergency situation or just line and that you just literally pull it through and it'll tear its way through nets but you should always carry a knife anyway and um, that's just to keep your spare one of these on it just goes onto that I believe yeah it just snaps onto that this here is a bar if you ever take spear a fish you can put the fish on that bar you push it through it just hangs on your off your jacket. Flippers, these are Volos. Volo Power, they are mares, which is a French make, I believe. But you'll see that they've got like, they're hard, but they've got like soft rubber in between. And these things are so gentle on your, on your, I mean, if you go diving, you know that your ankles sometimes ache from, from diving a lot from the fins. But these, you barely even know you've got them on, and you've got some serious power behind these when you start kicking because of this, this webbing stuff. They weren't cheap, put it that way, but they certainly do the trick. And at the back there you've got a set of snorkeling fins. And you've got fuel, funnels for doing the fuel, and then it's just shackles. This is a line thing for pulling lines off of reloading reels. It's just a bamboo stick where you just line them up like that. Bits for ropes. That's just one of those little shrimp things you buy off eBay. Whole bunch of anchors. We've got a lot of anchors around the place. Diving weights, because obviously I need the weight. I actually need an extra. I need about an extra four pound when I go diving. I always seem to float. <laughs> That's a bag just for keeping crab. And if I ever have uh, extra crab, or I need the. When I didn't have like two store pots, I just had the one. I need to keep the crab separate from the lobster. So sometimes I put them in that bag, just hang them off the rope for a night, and then go back and get them the next day. That sort of thing. And that's the crab pot net, obviously, that we use for our crab pots. And then along the front here, just junk. I say junk. Life jackets. Life jacket there. Don't know what that is. Life jacket there, life jacket there, life jacket there, life jacket there. So plenty of those. And up there we've got mooring boys, crab pot necks. Those are just buckets with some crab pot necks behind rope. A mixture of boys that have been given to me, found, or I've just had for a long time up there. And then these are the sort of crab pot ones we use down here. Bit of a mishmash, really. But I mean, most of the, obviously, the boys and that that we're using at the moment, ropes, they're all outside, still on the pots. That's something I need to sort out. But I need to get this shed, I need to get this shed sorted before then to you know, be able to work on stuff, because obviously I've got to build pots and that in here through the winter, but we are getting there. Oh, one thing I might have missed, not very interesting. Dive tanks, you've got a 15 litre over there, you've got a 12 litre over there, and in the corner there's a really great pump, that's a water pump, and there is a pot down there, which is what I melt the lead in. 
Oh, that was another thing I was going to show you. I said it the other day about squid jig. Well, there's the spikes I was on about. You just put them on a wire or on a line and you put a fish above it, like a, a dead fish as opposed to using a lure. Works the same. Um, obviously, you can see that that's the spikes on the squid jig and that's the spikes that I've got in this bag, which are a damn sight bigger, but they're, I, I prefer the bigger spikes, to be honest. Especially with the big squid. So I found another box over here that we had with all the with even more lures in, look, we've got even more soft plastics in here. Again, that's the raised ones, and that's the tsunamis. These are ones you buy cheap off the internet, they, and they do work very well. But if you've ever seen one of these, I think that's a Nomura one, but it's a really, really long one. Haven't caught on it yet, but I know a certain place where I think that would work. But off the shore. And there's some of the silicon lures we make, just when we make lines up. These are fish eyes, basically stick on eyes when I make any lures of any form. This actually is, give me a sec, that's just some more flies I made up. These are more sort of seawater ones I suppose, but I mean, it's, they are what you want them to be really. So there, there was more in here, but I don't know where they've gone. Obviously I haven't used them or they've been kicking around for a while, but that was some more colourful ones I made. Well, we've got fresh water floats in here, we've got stainless wire, this is for doing the lures with when we make plugs up and that sort of thing. These are just extra cables that come with sounders and that, that have been thrown in there. And down here we have yet more lures and stainless wires. There's a great big herring kind of one. I actually stood on it and broke the uh, the bib off of it so I had to make another bib for it. Um, just little lures for various things. You see there's different ones. These are handmade ones actually. These ones I made up in Sweden. I used to catch pike on them. I did various ones. That's one. That's another one. I used to have loads, but I don't know what happened to them. They vanished one time. And just some older ones. Those are the hand, some of the handmade lures. And these are more trebles, these are really big ones, the big lures, these are like 2 ones. But you'll find lures everywhere around here, everywhere you go there's lures. That's actually pheasant feathers, that's from making flies I think. Just bits and pieces really. Um, that's off reels for, you know, like when you're shark fishing or tuna fishing or whatever. That's just a little bait thing, putting bait in. That is actually a mercury switch, a very old one, which just stays in there. Bulbs, we used to have torches, <laughs> remember those with the bulbs? <laughs> and three-way swivels, and those are stainless hooks in there, but I don't use stainless. They're probably ones I've found, picked up off the beach, and I've just chucked them in the box. Oh, this is my diving stuff. This is spare O-rings and valves and things for the diving equipment that's just kept in there. And this one. Ah, uh, yes. This is um, where I chuck all the spare eyes and ones that have been taken off. That's still good. You know, if you break a rod or something, I just cut the eyes off, chuck them in there. Because you never know when you're going to need a spare eye. And these are all new rod tips. In case I need any rod tips for certain rods, I buy several different sizes and the leftover ones get put into there. And these are all split rings. I see they're all stainless split rings. That's for the lures again. And if I get a lure that's got like non-stainless, as in steel, then I'll take them off and I'll replace them with stainless ones. More trouble there. And these are actually squid jigs. These come off those things. These are actually the luminous ones, but I've dismantled them because I've never had much luck with these ones. So I just dismantled them and I just used them. I think probably that's some of those barbs that are off, actually off these because I'd have dismantled them. Then I just used the barbs with a bit of bait on because I found it more effective at the time. There you go. Another little box of treasure. 
if you're a fisherman. If you're not, then it's probably all junk. <laughs> In my case, it's a bit of both. Okay. Found something. Ooh. These these have got blimmin' hot. So they do still work. They ran out of date three years ago, I think it is on the packet. And yet these are hot. I put my hand out, I thought, what the hell's that? Like I thought, you know, it was gonna burn myself or something. But no, they've actually got really, really hot. They work fine. Well, that's nice though, I'll keep those in my pocket. So there you go. Hand warmers out of date. Don't chuck them away. They do work. Well, at least the ones I got do. And that's all right now, I won't need to get any more. Because it's not something I really go out and buy more than that, but it's just nice to carry them in your bag. Because we've probably all, all of you that have fished, you will have known those nights where you sit there shivering like crazy and like you know there's going to be a good fish coming or something but you don't want to leave because you want to catch the fish but you're also so cold and these you grab these these are just oh they're so nice on those really cold nights i actually um was fishing once on oh god it was i don't know if it was two i think it was two degrees that night and i fell asleep on the rock and when i actually woke up it, it felt like i'd actually welded myself to the rock like half my body was almost like it was frozen to the rock it was horrible feeling but um, yeah, not the best thing to do going to sleep when you're cold because you will absolutely freeze. We used to say it when we used to go conga fishing. You know, try and avoid going to sleep unless you're well, well wrapped up. Otherwise, you'll be freezing when you wake up because your heartbeat and everything slows. Everything slows down, so you get cold. His eyes come off. These eyes have come off this one actually. Put them back on. There you go. Yeah, these are the handmade. I actually think I was sprayed that when I was going to use it again. I think this one was actually a really good one. It's funny because some of the bigger ones, the big chunky ones, seem to be catching well. Right, we're going to leave this one here. So, until the next one.